Hi everyone and welcome back to the Stitch Sessions and welcome to our Year of the Bride series. We're back into a new month, we're hitting up May and this month's bridal crochet project is this really pretty bridal bolero jacket and we've got this really pretty little trim here with the uh, lacy shells and you may notice that the pattern is very similar to the vintage style gloves we made previously. Now I would have loved to have a beautiful bridal model demonstrate this and, and model it for you, uh, but of course due to the global shutdown, we have not been able to get together with anyone. And frankly, I could have worn it because it does fit me, but I didn't have anything really nice to wear with it and I felt that this uh, jacket, especially because it's a bridal kind of garment, I wanted it to be paired with something that would look really elegant and beautiful. So for now, I hope that you get the gist of the look of this jacket. It's just meant to be a little kind of very dainty cover-up, uh, especially sometimes May weddings. It's still a wee bit on the cool side, or if you're having a bit of um, a religious ceremony, in certain institutions, they prefer that the brides keep their shoulders covered at least. Uh, in any case, you don't actually have to necessarily make this just for uh, a bride. It can also be made as a great add-on gift to anyone's wardrobe. And as Mother's Day is also coming up, this might actually make for a sweet gift for mom as well. So I know you can't wait to get started on this project. This is actually fairly simple. I know it looks really intricate, but for you newer crocheters out there, I think you're gonna enjoy um, taking this one on. So let's just get all of our materials together and let's get stitching. Okay, in order to make your bridal bolero jacket, here are the materials you're going to need. So for this project, the yarn that I'm using is the Bernat Baby Coordinates. And I just love the feel of this yarn because it's really delicate and yet it's got just a little bit of kind of, it reminds me of like a, a fluffy white cloud. And um, because, you know, many times in um, the late spring, uh, because this is for our May bride, things can still be a little bit chilly. And if you've got a dress that is strapless or off the shoulder, sometimes just a pretty little bolero jacket for, you know, doing outdoor activities or taking photos is just the beautiful added touch for uh, the whole ensemble. Also, this can be a fantastic project for uh, bridesmaids as well. So this is actually a very versatile project. Now, um, this is considered a lightweight three yarn and they are calling for a four millimeter hook. And it's also, in case you're wondering, just the color white, okay? Now, the hook that I'm using is actually much larger than what they're recommending. I am using a six millimeter hook, also known as a J. And the reason why I'm doing that is because this yarn has a bit of um, texture to it, um, I wanted the stitches to sit a little bit more relaxed and looser. I'm big on that. You'll hear me talk about that a lot in uh, many projects. So that is why I opted to go for a larger hook size. And as we work on it, you're going to see why as the project takes hold. Okay, so that's our um, yarn and this is the hook. Now this is... In this skein, it's 140 grams. This should be more than enough. We're doing a very uh, short bolero jacket. Really, it's just meant to kind of add a little bit of coverage to the shoulders and become just a little added detail. It's not really meant to be a full on um, cardigan or sweater, okay? The other thing you wanna make sure that you have on hand is a measuring tape. Of course, you wanna measure the person you're making it for, and I'll explain uh, the measurements for that in a second. Um, of course, you'll need a pen, a pencil, whatever uh, helps you, and a piece of paper to write down your measurements. And as always, make sure you have a very good trusty pair of scissors and a darning needle for much later to sew in your ends, okay? So let's break down how we're gonna create this bolero jacket. Okay, so let's just get this out of the way here. So in essence, this project, I think you're gonna be floored at just how easy it's going to be to create 
our um, bolero. So really, it's one main piece, which is actually going to be a rectangle, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're going to chain the armholes. Now, as always, I do not claim any artistry talents, so this is probably very disproportionate. So we're gonna chain the armholes, and then we're going to proceed to crochet a border all the way around. And we'll probably do it in several rows until we work up a, um, a sleeve. And in fact, I probably should have made those armholes look a little bit smaller. So what this portion is here, this portion is gonna go across the back and then these two panels here will fold around the front. Remember, the bolero that we're making for the bridal style is not meant to fully close in the front, okay? So, uh, if this is the back of the bride, and again, my artistry skills are terrible, okay? So we're assuming that her arm's going through here. Yes, I'm definitely not an artist. And then her dress is down like that. So you can see, like, it's not really meant to be full coverage. It's just meant to kind of give her a little, little something across the shoulders and the upper back. Chances are her dress is probably going to end right about there if she's wearing a strapless dress. Okay, let me turn that over and see. So if I can do this from the front. So if you've got this like this. So... The bolero jacket, the idea, maybe this is going to look somewhat decent, I don't know. So the idea is that the bolero jacket is going to sit like that, okay? Or it might even come down this way, okay? And just kind of come in this way like that. So it's very... Um, Again, it's very subtle. It's just a little added accessory. It might just cap over the shoulders ever so slightly, okay? And that's really the look we're going for, okay? Just a little coverage there. Most likely that is her dress right there. Okay, actually, you know, the arms are disproportionate, but hopefully you can get the idea of what we're going for, okay? So what we're gonna do first is we're just gonna work on our first portion, which is this rectangle here. And if you made our vintage style bridal gloves, we are going to be using the same pattern pretty much. So you're hopefully you're going to be as excited as I am as at how easy it is to make, but how cool and complicated it's going to look when it's done. Okay, so here we go. So what I'm going to be doing is I am going to be working a height of eight inches okay and forgive me in centimeters that works out to 20 centimeters okay and then the width is 36 centimeters okay so if you're working on the metric and you're doing a size small to medium you would do similar to myself now I always like talking about the measurements in length and not in chains so Many times you'll do a tutorial and they will give you the option of chaining, let's say, 10 for a small, 14 for a medium, 20 for a large, etc., etc., etc. The only kind of hiccup I find with that is that it depends on how tight of a crocheter you are. So if you crochet fairly tightly, those number of chains might still not work for you. Or if you chain really loosely, like if your gauge is loose. So I always like to give the measurement itself, or depending on the size you're making for, give the measurement for that size. And then you, as you crochet, I would recommend you going to that size. So for you, uh, maybe eight inches is going to be 10 chains. Maybe for you it's going to be 15 or 20 chains because you're a tighter crocheter. So just a little kind of background on um, my approach to kind of doing things with measurements, okay? Okay, so let's begin. Now, 
Um, you're going to notice if you're going to use the exact same um, yarn that I am using, which is the baby coordinates, it's got kind of this little, um, I like to call it like this crinkle effect, which is going to make it feel so lovely and look really pretty. Um, a lot of people use this for baby blankets, which I indeed have done in the past. A little something. When you're chaining, because of this little crinkly effect, if you don't have a lot of patience for not being able to see your stitches, this may be an issue for you, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the sample of what the stitch is going to look like with a smoother yarn, okay? And then once we've worked up the, the panel, then I'll come back to this. If you're okay with it, again, as always, just pack your patience. I'm just going to show you really quickly. So we're going to begin with a slip knot and then we're going to chain the length that you need to create the height of that back panel for you. So I'm just going to do a few chains here. Okay, so see it's really pretty, um, but look at all the texture it creates. So if you're not very experienced, it can be a little tricky to see where to place your stitches. So I hope that before you go and buy your yarn that you have watched up to this part of the video just to warn you that if uh, you're a little newer, this may be more challenging for you. Okay, so I'm just doing a couple of single crochets just to give you the basic idea. So the first chain might still be okay actually, but now we're getting into scenario like this where it's all looking really bumpy and in it once the garment's done it's going to look fantastic but this may pose a challenge for you right and also in tutorials I, I like to make sure that things are nice and clear so that you know you can choose whatever yarn you like but I'm going to uh, just for the tutorial go to a smoother yarn and show you what the stitch pattern will be and then if you want to come back to this you can okay Okay, so I've got some of this um, leftover yarn from uh, Karen Cotton Cakes, which is fabulous for making bags. Those of you that made our vintage style bridal clutch, this was what we used. Okay, so I'm still going to use my six millimeter hook. I just think it'll make it easier for you all to see the stitches. So to begin our back panel, you're going to start with a slip knot. And then you're going to chain the length that you're going to need to create the height of your back panel. So remember, we're working across the back, right? We're going to create that length, but we're going to work up and down this way. So we need to do the number of chains that will get us the height that we need, okay? Okay, so for me, I chained 28. And you can see they're sitting nice and relaxed because I used the larger hook. So if you end up with a, an even number, then you're going to continue on from here. If you end up with an odd number, like 27 or 29, let's say, add one more, one more chain. Okay? So we want to have an even number of chains. And you'll understand why, hopefully, very shortly. So once you have your odd number, or sorry, your even number, we're then going to go into the second chain from the hook, which for me right there, and we're just simply going to place one single crochet into each stitch or each chain all the way across. Okay, And again, the pattern we're going to be using for this jacket is actually the same pattern we used for our bridal gloves. So you could even make this as a matching set if you're really working on a vintage style bridal theme. And I've got my last chain here to do my single crochet. And now you've got something that looks like this. See, it's much easier with this yarn to see your stitches. So now you should have an odd number of stitches, which is what we wanted to end up with in the first place, okay? So that is row one, and this is a 
four row repeat. I know it sounds daunting, but trust me, it's going to be easier than you think. Okay, so for row two, what we're going to do is we're going to chain one and turn our work. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to continue doing single crochets, but we are going to work into the front loops only of this um, row. Okay, so if you've ever uh, checked out our tutorial on identifying parts of your stitch, which we'll make sure to put in the description box down below for you to reference, there are many different parts of your stitch. So anytime you turn your stitch over and you can see the V's there, those are the top loops. You have the front loop, which is the one closest to you, and then you have the back loop, which is the one furthest away. In this particular row, we're going to be working into the front loops only, just like that. Okay, so you're going to insert right away into that very first stitch, and you're going to single crochet into the front loop only. Okay. I'm just going to take that out and do that again, just so that you're clear. So we had chained one and then turned our work. Now, I, for now, I skip this first one because the chain one, for me, will count as the first single crochet. I'm going to go into the front loop of the very next stitch and just go under and up through the front and place a single crochet. Now, as always, for you really tight crocheters, I would not skip that one. I would go into that one because if you're a tight crocheter and you go into the next one, it's going to scrunch in your work, okay? But uh, I would say I'm um, an average gauge, so I feel really confident leaving that one there uh, loose enough. And that's all you're going to do for row two is you're going to place one single crochet in each stitch going in through the front loops only. So again, into the next stitch in the front loop only. So if I just turn that over for a second, you can see that it's pushed that other loop forward, creating a bit of a nice texture there. And it's a nice, easy way to create texture in your work, okay? All right, so you know what to do. Front loops only, single crochet, one into each. Okay, so I've come up to the end here and now I've got my last stitch. And this is where you wanna be careful. This is where we chained one. So you can definitely see it's not finished, but it can be confusing where to go into next. So sometimes I just turn it over a little bit and I can see that there's the V I'm looking for, the top of the stitch. And I just sneak in there front loop and do my last single crochet. Just keeping it nice and loose, okay? So you will chain one, turn your work, and now you should be able to see that you've got this really cool little ridge that runs across there, okay? So we're gonna move on to row three. Row three is still single crochet stitches. So see, very, very easy. So we are now going to work into the back loops only, okay? So the idea is that we want our ridges to always stay towards one side. So that will definitely give us a front side and a back side, okay? So we've chained one, keeping it really relaxed. I'm gonna skip this very first loop here, this first stitch, okay? And I'm going to go into this next one here. Now this time, instead of popping up through the front, I'm going to go in down the center so that I can push out that back loop. So that's the one furthest away from me. Okay, so I'm going to bring it through and single crochet. Again, down through the center of the V, pushing out that back loop and single crochet. One more time, next stitch. So we're not going in through the full stitch. We're going in and picking up the back loop. Okay, so you can see now the ridge is coming towards the front again. And that's it for row three. Single crochet all the way to the end and I'll meet you there. And two more stitches to go. 
And there's that chain one, right? So I'm going to go into the back loop there. And row three is complete. So it's going to look something like this. So you're seeing this kind of cool little ridgy effect happening. Um, so we are now going to move on to row four and the final row of our repeat. We are now going to chain three. So you're going to chain one, two, three. This chain three will count as a half double crochet plus a chain one. Okay. And by the way, always double check the number of your stitches to make sure that they're staying consistent. So I had 28 stitches at the very beginning when we did our chains and then we started in the second chain from the hook. So I've now had 27 stitches the whole time. So it's an odd number and you need to make sure it's an odd number for this particular row we're doing now. Okay. So I do indeed have 27 stitches. So maybe for you it's 29 or 25. You want to make sure they're odd. And here's why. Once you've done your chain three, you're not going to work into this first stitch here because this is the base of your uh, first stitch. So two of these chains count as a half double crochet. We're now going to skip the next stitch and go into the second stitch here. And we're going to half double crochet into that. So we're going to yarn over first, insert our hook. So you have three loops and then you're going to pull through all three. Okay, so that you've got a spacing that looks like that. So two of these chains count as the height of a half double crochet. And then the third chain represents the spacing for this stitch we skipped here. Okay, you're then going to chain one, skip the next stitch and into the following stitch, you will do the same thing again. Yarn over, insert and place a half double crochet. Chain one, skip the next stitch into the following stitch. You're going to do a half double crochet. And that is the pattern all the way to the end of this row. Okay. And that it completes our full pattern repeats. I'm just going to take that out. So you can see it's creating these cute little eyelets here. Now this is the back. So when we turn to the front, we can now see we've got this really pretty ridge effect and we've got these really sweet little eyelets here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue with this all the way to the end of the row. I'm just going to meet up with you here just to make sure that you um, finish off your row nice and cleanly and that it makes sense to you. Okay, so my work is looking like this. Actually, I really like working with this, um, the cotton cakes with the six millimeter hook. In the past project, um, I had used a smaller hook, but I love how these stitches are sitting like this. Okay, so I'm coming up to the end. I've done one, my second last uh, half double crochet, and I've got two stitches left, which is correct. Okay, so I've got this one and then the chain one. So I'm going to chain one here for the space. I'm going to skip this next stitch and into the last stitch. See, there's a chain one. I'm going to half double crochet. Now, be careful not to do that because that would go down the center. So I want to make sure, hopefully you can see that, that I'm picking up both of those loops there of the chain one. And I'm going to half double crochet. And that finishes off row four and our repeat. So hopefully you can see that. Love that. So basically our work is going to be worked this way. And now we're going to work across the back. So you'll keep repeating those four rows until you get the length that you need. So for me, that's going to be 14 inches. But let's just turn this over so you can see what the front looks like. So there you have the, the ridges from the back loops and the front loops. And now we've created these little eyelets. Isn't that pretty? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start you off again with row one, just to show you how to work on top of row four, because we've got these spaces here. Okay. So once you start row one again, 
you will chain one. You'll turn your work. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to go into this very first stitch here. So I find a lot of times after we do rows like this, that chain one is so easy to get tight in there. So I want to make sure that it stays nice and relaxed. So I'm just going to go right away into it and single crochet. And of course, if you are a super tight crocheter, absolutely do that. Okay. Now we've got a, um, a chain one space here. So what I'm going to do, just keep it nice and easy, is we're going to go into that space and single crochet. And then in the next uh, chain or the next stitch, you're just going to single crochet. So remember, row one was just simple single crochets. So we have did a stitch and now we're in a space, so we go into a space. We have a stitch here, we go into the stitch, and then we go into a space. Now a little something about where your stitches sit, and I've covered this on the deeper dive of identifying parts of your stitch. We are working into the back of the half double crochet stitches. So when you create a stitch, I want you to notice that your the loop or the top of the stitch sits to the right. But because we're working, you know, the work has been turned over, the loop now sits to the left. So that's how you know what stitch you're working on. So if you want to work into the stitch that belongs to this post here, it will be this one. Okay, so not to be confused with the right. If we were working in the round, then you would know it always sits to the right just like that. So this is, we're facing the right side of the work here, so it sits to the right. This stitch here, we're facing the back of it. So the loop we're going to work into is always slightly to the left of the post. Okay, hopefully that made sense to you. I know sometimes I, I repeat and double talk a lot, but I'm just... It's the teacher in me that just wants to make sure that it's clear, it makes sense, and that you understand it, okay? So this is all you're going to do anytime you do your row one, because now you are working into um, some spaces and into some stitches, okay? So it's always one space and one stitch. Okay, so now you can see that it's really coming out so nicely. I love that. Okay, so I'm pretty much going to set you loose. Now, see, just a little something. See this? This is original chain. It tends to get a little tighter, and this is why, if you are a super tight crocheter, because I have a couple ladies in my uh, real life crochet class, they, they really crochet tightly. So, what I recommend is if you're using a six for most of your work, go up to a 6.5 millimeter hook, or if you can find a seven if they're round, um, and do your chain because you don't want this to be bunching like this. You do want it to sit nice and flat, okay? So you're gonna repeat row one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. And you're gonna do that until you get the length that you need to go across the back. For me, that's 14 inches. Okay, gang, I'll meet you back here when you've got your back panel done. Okay, so I have my 14 inches. So this is what is going to go across the back. So you can see it's got this really pretty texture with these subtle eyelets in there, and I just love that. So now a lot of times what happens is as you kind of go through um, – the habit of crocheting it row by row by row, one of two things happens. Either you get looser as you go along or you get a little bit tighter because sometimes people crochet their foundation row really tight and then they loosen up. Um, because I'm pretty decent at keeping my foundation row relaxed, I got in the zone and you can see that it's just a wee bit snug up here. I'm not worried at all because as we work, um, and through blocking, this will even out a little bit. It's it's not too bad. It's very subtle, but you can see just it's a little bit narrower over here. Okay, so I have this across the back. This is the back piece. And now you can see that what I've done already is we're now going to form our armholes. 
Okay, so it's simply just a chain that we're gonna attach to the corner here. Now, you need to measure kind of the opening that you want. Uh, if you want something super snug and a very tight armhole, you're gonna have less. Obviously, if you want it looser, you're gonna have more. Now, I will be doing a finishing row on the inside, so that's why mine is a little bit more relaxed. For me, I chained 40 chains. Uh, I would say on average, it's between 30 and 40 chains, depending on your size. So um, because this yarn, as pretty as it is, um, because of the little ripply bumpiness, you see it's really hard to see the stitches. So again, I'm just gonna pull up my, my little mini swatch here. Okay, so this is supposed to represent that long, um, back panel there okay so it's really really straightforward you're just going to make a chain length okay so in my case i chained 40 and i'm just going to do a random number here because again this is just a swatch to show you guys and i want to make sure that you can see what's happening with the stitches so let's pretend i did my 40 and because we want our eyelets to sit lengthways i'm going to go to the top so this would have been the last row i did and oh, and that's the other thing. You'll notice that I finished with row three, okay? So with that last um, a single crochet into the back loops, okay? So that's the row you wanna end on so that both sides are flanked by those single crochet rows, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. So once you've got your chain length, then you're gonna go back to the beginning of that row and you're just gonna slip stitch to join. Okay, just like that. And there's your armhole. What you wanna do here, and I'm not gonna do it because this is just a little swatch here, is you're going to snip your yarn, fasten off, and then you're gonna to come to the other side, insert, uh, slip stitch to join, do another set of chains. So for me, it's 40, so I'm gonna do another 40, and then slip stitch to the bottom here. You'll then have your two armholes complete, and then we can continue on forming the rest of the shape of the bolero jacket. So go ahead and do that, and then I'll take you to the next section. So you're gonna do that on both sides. You're gonna chain, you're gonna um, attach here, snip your yarn, then you're gonna to go to the other side, insert with a slip stitch, chain your 40, and then slip stitch at the end. But don't fasten off here because now we're just gonna continue um, to build the rest of our bolero from here, okay? So I'll meet you when you've done both of your armholes, which shouldn't take you very long. Okay, so I'm just fastening off my second chain here, and I wanna make sure that I'm doing this with the right side facing me because now we're going to work in the round. And I'll show you what I mean in a second because we're going to just crochet all the way around the piece now to create the panels in the front around our armhole. So you want that textured portion, the one with the, with the ridges, to be facing forward. So I'm just going to find that last stitch there and I'm just going to slip stitch to join my yarn here. And now I'm gonna continue on just like that, okay? Of course, make sure that your chain is not twisted, okay? And so now we're gonna start working along what was the side edges, because remember we were working our rows this way, yeah? So for this row, we're just gonna go back to row one and we're gonna do one single crochet all the way around until we come back to our original first stitch. So what's gonna happen now is you really wanna gauge where the side of your stitch is. And actually, so I'm gonna put this down because you can see it's, it's quite a textured yarn and um, it's gonna be a little tricky, I think, on camera. So I'm just gonna do this with my swatch. Okay, so I have my swatch here. 
And so I've slip stitched to join. So there's my armhole. Now in this case, it's facing the back, but it should be facing this way. So see how that's the front with the ridges? So now we're gonna work down the sides. So we want to basically work into the side of each row. So each single crochet row gets a single crochet in the side of the stitch. So depending on the yarn that you, you are using, I always like to kind of stretch my work out so I can see my rows. So I'm going to do, I'm gonna chain one now, and I'm gonna single crochet into that very first stitch again. And that helps me kind of come around the corner here. Now into the side of the next row, which is this one right here, I'm going to single crochet again. That's basically all we're gonna do for this first round. Now into the side of this next row, which looks like it might've been a chain one, I'm gonna try if I can, which is what I like to do, instead of just going in here, sometimes I try to pick up an extra little loop um, just be careful you're not going in too deeply, but it just for me help, makes me feel like it's a little bit more fortified. See, so now you can really see that it's it's getting some uh, reinforcement in the sides there, especially where the eyelets are. Now, we did a half double crochet for the eyelet row. So it doesn't quite get two single crochets, but sometimes one isn't enough. So I'm gonna, you're gonna have to gauge this, okay? And I would work right into that space and kind of see how it sits with, with the one beside it. And I might push that over. And then I might go right into the stitch it was worked into right there. And you really have to eyeball it to see, is it bunching? Uh, or is it kind of, uh, is it bunching because there's too many? Or is it bunching because there's not enough? Now that one kind of looks like it's sitting okay. So now I'm back to single crochet rows. So I'm just pulling my work apart and I'm gonna go into the side of the row and single crochet. And then this one again, I'm gonna try and pick up an extra little loop there. And then again, I just, I just gauge, okay? To me, it still looks good. See it sitting nice and relaxed. And then I'm coming up around the bend here now this would be where the other chain uh, arm loop is, okay? So obviously I didn't do the second one. But go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to uh, meet back up with you basically when you get there. I'm gonna meet back up with you here and then I'm just gonna go over all you're gonna do. <laughs>
Okay, you're gonna have something that looks like this. So you've done a double crochet chain one, double crochet chain one, double crochet chain one, and double crochet. So you've got four double crochets in here with a chain one in between. Okay, so that's creating a nice little flare. And then what you're going to do is you will skip the next two stitches, so the one right next to it and the following one, and into the third one you will do a single crochet. And what that does is it just anchors down each side of your shell. Looks like that, okay? And so now what you're going to do is you're going to skip the next two stitches. So we have one and two. And into the third one, we're going to do another shell or another fan. So I call this an open fan or an open shell because it's um, of the laciness of it. So you're going to do your double crochet. You're going to chain one, insert again into the same space, into the same stitch, double crochet, chain one. Again, double crochet, chain one, and one more double crochet. So in the end, you're always going to end up with four double crochets with spaces in between, just like that, okay? Then you skip two and you single crochet to anchor. Okay, so you're gonna have this pretty little um, little scalloped edging here. And you're going to do this all the way around. You're gonna come up around, up the sides, around the collar, all the way around until you come back to here. And once you do that, I'm gonna meet back up with you and I'm gonna take you through the final round, which is a simple, simple little finishing touch round. And, uh, and then you will repeat that on the inside edges of the sleeves if you wish. I plan on doing that. Um, it is completely up to you and um, the bride that you're making it for. But anyway, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself because I'm getting excited. So go ahead and do your scalloped edging and I'll meet back up with you when you are ready to uh, join your round and I'll take you through the finishing round. Okay, so here we have finished our lacy border and our bolero jacket is looking like this. I'm super happy with that. So what we're gonna do now is we're just going to embellish the laciness of these shells with a, just a finishing touch here. And uh, then I will, I am gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the sleeves just to add that little extra lacy effect, but you can leave yours plain if you like. So this is what I'm gonna do. So I just wanted to show you that I came to the very last space here. Now you may have the right number of stitches, you may not. So after I did my last lacy shell here, I didn't have quite five stitches, the five stitches I need. So instead of skipping two, I only skipped one stitch from the single crochet. I then did my lacy shell into the next stitch, which left me with one left, and then my original single crochet, and that is what I'm gonna slip stitch into. So sometimes you just have to rejig what you've got there, okay? And it actually fit in perfectly. So not to worry if that happens, you just wanna even out the stitches you have left. So for the finishing, finishing row, we're gonna chain one, and now we're simply going to single crochet into every stitch. So this first one here, is a single crochet. Actually, I'm lying, there will be some slip stitches. But I'm gonna single crochet into the stitch and then I'm gonna single crochet into the space. Remember that was a chain space there. And what that does is it helps to open up the laciness of the uh, fan there, okay? The next one is actually a stitch, so I'm gonna go into the stitch. And then the next one is a space. The next one is a stitch. 
And the next one is a space. Then I have the last one here is the stitch. And that's when I come to the single crochet. Now what I'm gonna do is in the single crochets, I'm actually gonna slip stitch. And that will just help to keep that really defined edge there. See how nice that looks? It just kind of gives it a little bit more of almost like a roughly look around the edge there of the shell. So I've slip stitched and then I'm gonna continue on as usual into the next one. I'm gonna single crochet and then into the space, into the next stitch, and into the space. This is what you're gonna do all the way around. So the next one is a stitch, and the next one is a space. And we have our stitch here, and then the next one is a single crochet. So we are going to slip stitch, okay? And then we're back with single crochets. So basically you're going to single crochet into every stitch in space, except for those single crochets that dip down, you're gonna slip stitch into them. So hopefully you can see that there. And that is the effect. So it really kind of helps the laciness of the shell stand out. I just love that, okay? That is it guys, this is how we're gonna finish our bolero jacket. You're gonna do that all the way around. And I am gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing in my sleeves, okay? And I would recommend, so the way this jacket has been working out is, where am I, I'm down here. So I've been seaming right about here. This for me, I'm making the bottom of the jacket. Okay, so when you do your sleeves, I would recommend maybe starting somewhere on the bottom, anywhere like under the arm area, because if there is any obvious join at all, it'll get hidden. But I am super pleased with how this is coming out. Okay, guys, I'll meet you back here when we've done our finishing rows. And voila, guys, your bridal bolero jacket is complete. So you can see that the added little border around the edges creates a little bit of a higher collar at the top. And um, I just think that this makes it a little bit more regal and elegant. And I love how the, um, the single crochet border at the very end just really opened up the, the shells to show off their laciness. And as you can see, I also did it on the sleeves as well, which for me, I thought created the perfect cap off to this bolero jacket. This was actually such a delight to work on. I really hope that you guys uh, enjoy working on your bolero jacket. And um, if you have any questions, you know you can always just leave me a comment in the comment box down below, or you can email us directly at info at crochetcrafty.com. And of course, we'll leave a link for some of our other crochet bridal items, but uh, I'm having such a fun time this year working on this series. Um, you know you can always follow me as well on Instagram at The Stitch Sessions. And we upload every Wednesday morning and sometimes we upload a few extra throughout the week like some of our crochet quick chats so please do uh, tune in we also have a newsletter that we have out now we're going to leave all that info in the description box down below and we are doing some online live interactive crochet classes as well so they are really fun they're very small groups so make sure to uh, get the info on that you can just as well email us at info at crochetcrafty.com and um, they're super fun uh, this may we are starting on our crochet summer blouse so all that information is in the description box down below i love having you guys come along on my crochet journey Thank you so much for following along. And as always, I wish you a wonderful day. Happy crocheting, stay well, and I will see you guys in the next session. Take care.